Welcome everyone to Twitch Recipes, uh, making Drupal 8 render the markup that you want. Uh, a quick question before I start, Does, is anyone here attending a Drupal camp for the first time? Wow, a lot of people. Well, well, welcome to you all and thank you for being with us today. My name is Mauricio Dinarte. You can find me as Dinarco pretty much everywhere in the internet. That is my email and my Drupal.org profile. I am from Nicaragua, so it's a beautiful country, and for the first time ever, I think, while presenting, it is a little bit colder than Texas, so <laughs> it's usually the opposite. Um, if you want to follow along, the slides are, are already available in that link, uh, bit.ly slash tweak dash recipes. Okay. I work for a company called Agaric. We are based in Boston, but we are a distributed team. So we have people here in the States, in Nicaragua, Mexico, Germany, and England. And one thing that I want to make sure is that even though I will be providing a couple of examples for Tweak, it is not the examples that I want to convey, but the process to reach the output or the outcome that you want. So Leah Beru, I know I pronounced that wrong, she, she said, understanding the process of finding a solution is far more valuable than the solution itself, and I truly believe that. So, let's dig in. Um, we are t uh, we're trying to make Drupal render something, and that something is what we want. The very first thing is uh, themes. Why? Because the themes are the ones responsible for controlling the appearance of your website. So, among the responsibilities, they define the layout of the website, like for example, how they will behave like in a desktop, tablet, or phone view. They also define the color scheme, the font size, the font face to be used, and they might provide some uh, interactive user experiences. For example, if you have a slideshow, even though it is recommended to do that using modules, uh, there are some themes that provide that interaction out of the box. And along the presentation, you're going to see a lot of links for more information about that specific topic. Uh, themes work with templates. Uh, the role of a template is to separate the business logic from the presentation logic. And what that means is that if you want, uh, let's say, to pr uh, render something conditionally, you don't necessarily do it in the template itself. You do some pre-processing in the, in the, in the back end, like for example, calculating the sum of, a, of an invoice, and you just like in the template, you just print the result of the calculation. Uh, the template is, simple, is simply HTML markup uh, with some placeholder that will be replaced by the dynamic parts that come from the back end. And the templates can include CSS, JavaScript, and some other assets like images, for example. <coughs> Uh, this is an example of a, of a template in Drupal. This is used to render the breadcrumbs. As, as you can see, it's just like a couple of variables. We're going to uh, review the syntax step by step, so don't worry if this is a bit weird. And templates in Drupal are like onions. So if you saw the movie, you will know that why, because they come in layers. So when you have a Drupal website, you will have a template for like the master page if you if you want to call it like that. Then Drupal has the concept of regions. So you, in, inside the master one, you will have a template for regions. Inside the regions, you will have blogs. Inside blogs, you will have notes and so on. So in Drupal, you will have to work with uh, in different layers in order to achieve the, the output that you want. And it is important to know with what part you're working with, because if you're working with the region, you need to modify the region template. If you're working with the user, you need to modify the user template, and so on. So in Drupal, it is uh, like this concept. Let's imagine that we have, in, in our corporate website, we have a blog section where you know people write about stuff. And we have the main uh, article, and on the sidebar, we have a blog that says more articles by the same author. So how does that uh, blog gets rendered? How does that piece of content gets rendered? For one, it, we will have the, the theme region, uh, let's say sidebar. So the theme region template is the one printing the sidebar. 
Then we have the block itself. Let's assume that the block was created using a view. So inside the block, there will be a view template because we are rendering more content by the same author. That content is notes. So within the view, we have a note template. And then the node itself, we can render fields individually, like the date, like an image, the author, and so on. So for one piece of content in the website, we are already interacting with at least five different concepts. And for every bit of data, it will pretty much like this, like one layer on top of the other. And again, that's why you need to understand like in which layer you need to make the change. So that being said, this is how Drupal operates. So this, the HTML template, uh, it's like the masterpiece, like the wrapper for everything. All the templates will end with .html.tweak, and they look something like this. Uh, in, in here we have the, uh, almost at the bottom, five lines from the bottom, we have that curly bracket, curly bracket page. So that's, that is a variable. And what that does is calling another template. So that, uh, when, when Drupal sees that, it will call the next template, which is page. So and here you have more variables. And in this case, you see, for example, page.header, page.primary menu, secondary menu, highlight, content, and so on. Those page that something, those are the regions available in your theme. So uh, those are located in the page template. And again, the page template is going to call another template. After the page one comes the region. The region is very simple. It is just like, do we have something to print here? Yes or no? And the, if there is something, we, we wrap that in a div. After the region, comes the block. After the block comes the node, for example, if you are rendering nodes, and then you know you can continue the chain like to the user, to the field level, and so on. But the idea is to understand that Drupal works in these different layers, and one template called the next. OK, now we're, we're going to talk about Twig. And Twig is a templating engine for PHP. Set, uh, for PHP. It is part of Symfony framework, which we adopted in Drupal 8, and replaced PHP template from Drupal 7. Uh, one thing to note is that Twig is not exclusive to Drupal. In fact, it is used in many other projects. And an example of this is like, this is a Twig template that has nothing to do with Drupal. And what do we have in a Twig template? We have some markup, and we have this special syntax that is curly bracket, percent sign, curly bracket, uh, curly bracket again, and sometimes curly bracket and hashtag. So when, when you see that, that refers, this has to do with tweak. Everything else is just regular HTML. You can, if you want, probably not recommended, you can embed CSS in that template or you can embed uh, JavaScript inline in that template. Although there are better ways to do it and Drupal provides some ways to do that and we're going to cover that next. So. This is like, uh, a Twig template that has nothing to do with Drupal. Let's review the Twig, Twig syntax. So uh, when we have two curly brackets, what we're saying is that we want to print something. Remember that we said that the template is just like uh, some HTML with placeholders. So this is how you print the, the, those placeholders. In line number one, we have like node.bundle. Uh, in Drupal, internally, the bundle is the content type. So this will render the content type of the node that you're viewing, for example. In, uh, the dot notation is the most common to use, but there are some alternatives. It is also possible to, to use a square bracket, like if it were an array in PHP. So you define node, uh, square bracket, uh, quotation mark, and then the property. Or you can use attribute function. You pass the object, which is node, and then you define which attribute of that object you want to print. So in this example, land one, one, two, three are equivalent. They will do the same. Uh, in Drupal core, I would say 99% of the time, you will see that dot notation being used, and we're going to see why next. But there are a few examples where you need to use something else. Uh, here in line number six, this is an example from core, and it was really hard to find. I think there are only three of these at most. When the property starts with a hashtag, uh, you have to use 
uh, either that second or third notation, like line number two or line number three. Uh, if you start with a hashtag, you cannot use the dot notation. So that's an example. And if the attribute name has a dash inside of the name, you cannot use also the dot notation because Twig will think of that as a minus sign. Like you will like trying to do a subtraction instead of like trying to get a property of the object. And in Drupal core, I didn't find any example of this, but data attributes are very common, especially on a headless world. world. So when you have something like that, you can use, for example, the attribute uh, or the, the, the in parentheses option too. So why do we use the dot notation most of the time? Because it is kind of magic in how it operates. So you just pass like some object dot some property and it will do a lot of evaluations for you um, in the past like let's say that you are a front-end developer and you know your way around javascript and css and html but you have no idea about php at all in the past with uh, php template for example in drupal 7 we force the themers to know about the data structure. If this is an array, you have to use this notation. If it, this is an object, you have to use the arrow notation, for example, and things like that. With tweak in Drupal 8, you use the dot notation, and the themer doesn't have to think about that. They will just have the information available, and it's more intuitive. And internally, tweak is going to do all of these checks. First, it will try to find if it is a property in, a, in an array, uh, then if it is a property in an object, if it is a function in that object, if there is a function prepended with get or is, uh, if none of those are true, like all of these examples are like default tweak behavior. But in Drupal, we added one more. Line number 15 only works within Drupal. So if all the previous checks failed, uh, what we're going to do is call the render function over that thing. So in Drupal, we have a lot of render arrays. And if none of the other things are true, we just call render and return the output. And if that output is nothing like an empty string, then we say, okay, you made a mistake probably, let's return nothing, which is null in this case. Okay, so let's talk more about tweak. So in tweak, it is possible to have variables and we can construct them using the set keyword. So set, and then the name of the variable equals and the value. The value can be a scalar, meaning that it can be a number like one, like an integer, or a float like 1.5, or a string like hello. Uh, but it can also be an array, and you can use something like this, for example, in a, in a template to define classes that you want to apply to, to an element. So in this case, uh, we are we are using an array to define multiple classes. The first one is just node. In line number four, we see a tilde. That tilde is concatenation, so what is before plus what comes next. Uh, in, even in this scenario, we can use like the dot notation like for is promoted to check if, like if the node is promoted, let's add this class. If the node is sticky, let's add this other class. We can also do like uh, opposite of things, like if not something, add this class. And then we have in line number eight, that is called a ternary operator, although in this case it doesn't have the third part. It's like if view mode, like view mode, if this variable is set, then uh, print like after the question mark, add this class. If we were to add a colon and something else at the end, that will be like if the first thing, in this case, view mode, will be false. But uh, we're going to cover more examples of all of this stuff later. The point here is that you can define variables using any logic that you want in the template, and then print those variables. In this case, like in an article tag, we say attributes at, at classes, and we pass the, the, the variable that we set, and it will add the classes. Uh, Twig also has filters. So the roles of, of a filter, the pur purpose of a filter is to modify some input. In this case, let's say that I have some variable called some text and I want to make it uppercase before printing. So uh, filters are, are applied using the pipe operator. So you put pipe and then the name of the filter 
and that will turn that uppercase. In line number two, we have like a regular string. We can do the same. Sometimes we want, let's say that we want to apply the upper filter to a lot of lines. An alternative syntax is to use the um, curly braced preset sign, then filter, and then the name of the filter. And then you can have multiple lines, and then close it with end filter, and it will be applied to everything in between. And in line number 10, we can see that filters can be chained. So the result of one filter is the input for the next one. In this case, I have a variable called name. Let's say that variable has some HTML. I want to strip that HTML out of the content. And then I want to make the result of that uppercase. So you can do that. And uh, some filters also can receive parameters. So modules in this case, and this is actually an example from core. Modules is a variable containing all the modules that are enabled in your website. And let's say you want to print them, just like a comma separated list. You can use the safe join filter, which receives a comma parameter, like what would be the glue in between the elements. So comma, space, and that is going to be appended in between. Uh, this talk is not focused about security, but just for you to know, Twig comes by default with a filter called join. For security reasons, which I don't fully understand, we don't use that in, in, in Drupal, we use safe join. So whenever you need to do some joining a Twig template, always, always use safe join in Drupal. And there is a, a, an issue in the Symfony issue queue about using this by default. But it hasn't landed yet, so in Drupal, use this. And regarding uh, filters that receive parameters, some, some filters like the parameters are optional. So if you don't define them, you get defaults. So in this case, like if I want like the number format, can receive three parameters. The first one defines how many decimal places. The second, what is the decimal point separator? And the third one is the thousand separator. So if you don't define anything, like the first one would, would be only like 200. But in the second one, it would be 9,800.33. And one final uh, concept here are functions. So a function is will receive some arguments and will return a value. And these behave different than filters in the sense that when you apply a filter, you will always get the result right away, like to be printed somewhere. With functions, it can modify the template itself or it can modify the whole page. For example, if I want to print a random number, I can use the random function and I pass like a parameter and I get a number. Uh, I can use the range function to define a loop. So if I want to print something several times in a for loop, which we'll point to explain later, I can use like the range to define, okay, from zero to seven. And in line number 10, we have attach library. So in Drupal 8, the way that we add CSS and JavaScript to the, to the page is using libraries. So when we do something like this in a template, we're not going to see the, like the CSS and the JavaScript put inline right inside the template. It will modify the whole page. Like it will modify the whole page and it will in the end include everything that was included in the different templates. It will be there available. And we also have tests. So tests are usually uh, used for conditions like if this is true or if this is false. So we can check if a variable is not empty, if an, a variable is part of an array, if this variable equals something and that other variable is defined. Uh, we can do some logic like if this or that, or if this and that using or and an operators. And we can check also like if a number is odd or is even, like sometimes we can, we, we might want to apply zebra styles to a table. So you can use something like this to, to add the classes as needed. And technically speaking, the only test here is odd. Everything else like is, or, not, uh, and, and so on. Those are operators, but they are used in the context of, of test. So that's how they work. And something that I forgot to mention, pretty much most of these things are defined in tweak out of the box. 
there are some that are added by Drupal uh, specifically. So in those URLs, you can find the ones that are defined by Drupal specifically. You have, you have a question? Does, does that assume that the LSM operators? Uh, can, can you repeat that question, please? The LS and the LCF mm -hmm. works in play as well? Uh, yes, yes, you can use if, else if, and then else, yeah. We're going to see some examples of uh, control structures later, but you can do all of that in Twig. So yeah, the question was if you, if you can have an if else, else statement in Twig, and yes, it is possible. So let's have a summary of what we just see. We have filter, function, and test. So in the case of filter, they require something preceding it, and they can receive arguments, and the return value will always be a scalar, something to print right away. In the case of functions, they don't need anything preceding them. They can receive arguments, and the result of the function can be many things. Can be something to print right away, can be like an array, or it can be modifying the entire page. And in the case of test, uh, they require something behind them. They can receive arguments, and they always return a yes or no value, which is a Boolean. Okay, now let's go to control structures. So these are all examples from Drupal core. And this is how the messages are printed in Drupal. So for example, when, when you save a note and you get like this note has been saved, or when you submit a contact form and you know thank you for submitting the contact form, this is how it gets printed in Drupal. So you have, uh, if an, an if uh, statement messages is an array of all the uh, like messages to print. So using the length operator, I'm um, excuse me, the length filter, we see how many elements are going to be printed. Uh, in, if it is more than one, we print like a list. Otherwise, we just print a message. So the length operator is another example where we abstract things for the theme. Because uh, in PHP, if you have a string, if, and you want to know how many characters are in that string, you use, some, you use a function. If you have an array, and you want to count how many elements are in that array, you use a different function. In Twig, you just use length, and it will re re return the proper value, even if it's a string or an array. So this is, this is how we help themers not to worry about the internal data structures, but instead to focus on what they want to do or what they need to do, which is like the front end part. Uh, and here is an example where we have an if else statement. In line number eight, we, we see the first uh, filter. That is because messages is an array, and there is only one. We just want to print that one. It's the first one. So the first filter will retrieve the first element of the array, and print that. We also have an example of a for loop, and this is how you get a breadcrumb. Like when you go deep in the navigation, you, you know, you home, block, and then the name of the post, for example. This is how it gets printed. And you can nest control structure. So we have an if else inside a for loop here. So breadcrumb is also an array. We are iterating over each element, and we see does this element has a URL property? If so, print it as a link, and we create the marker for the link. Otherwise, just print the text, the contents of the text. Uh, so now to, to what we came here for. We want to override the Drupal default markup so that we can you know, present beautiful websites. In Drupal, core comes with a lot of themes. One of those themes is called a stable. A stable alone has 153 templates. So <laughs> how do you know which template do you need to modify in order to achieve the results that you want? Remember that, as I said, if you are modifying a node, a view, a user, a block, and so on, you need to modify the proper template. So we're going to, to go through that process. Yeah, why, why so many <laughs> templates in Drupal? Uh, so let's do an exercise, and this is for demo purposes only, and I will explain at the end why you shouldn't do it this way, but bear with me. In a default Drupal 8 installation, if you create an article, you get a tagline, like submitted by 
the author on the date. We want to change, let's say that we want to change the format of the date to be month, day, comma, year. So how do we do that? This is the process that we're going to follow. Uh, first, we're going to enable theme debug, and we're going to see why that's super useful. We're going to locate the proper template to override. We're going to copy that template from its default location to our theme. Sometimes we might need to use template suggestions, or we're going to explain that too. Then we, mod we make the changes that we want. We clear the caches, which I think in Drupal 8 is actually revealed in the caches, but well. And then you rinse and repeat. You follow the same process over and over for different templates until you get the result that you want. And in the end, you disable theme debug, otherwise some strange things might happen, and I will give some examples. So the first step is enable theme debug. So you can read more about that in those links, but basically in your site, you will have a file called services YML, and in that file you look for these uh, properties and change them to true. Once you do that uh, and clear your cache, the next time you render the page, you will be able to inspect the source code, and when you inspect the source code, you will get more information about what is being rendered. For example, uh, in this case, those HTML comments, the things that appear in green, uh, that, that is what you get when you enable theme debug. And it gives three pieces of information which are key to what we're going to do. For one, it tells you which template is being currently used to render that part of the page. For example, in this case, we are rendering a node, and it says these nodes come from the Bartik theme, and that is the full path. So that is the file that we're going to copy over to our theme. In addition to that, it, get, it gives file name suggestions. So let's say that you want to modify the node template, but only for one specific content type. Uh, what you can do is, when you copy over the file, you can rename the file, so instead of being just node.html.tweak, it can be node-article, for example, .html.tweak. And those changes will only modify the nodes of type article. You can, you can do that per content type. Uh, you can do also by view mode. So you know that by default Drupal Core, Drupal Core comes with teaser view mode, full view mode, and so on, and you can define your own. So let's say that you have many different content types, but you want to apply a certain style to all of them, not depending on the content type, but depending on the, on the view mode being used, you can do the same. So no dash dash name of the view mode. And you can you know, go as uh, detailed as you want using node IDs, for example, like for node ID one. But that is not recommended because if you are in a like dev staging and production environment, those numbers will change between environment. So it's better to avoid doing uh, using node IDs for that. So, and the last thing that we get is the theme hook. Uh, in this case, it just says node. So this means that if we want to provide more variables for this template, we will have to implement uh, a pre-processed fun pre function for the, th for the node theme hook. And we're going to see some example of that. Again, like if you are interacting with a node or with a user or with a block, that is what will come next. So that's like the very first thing. Okay, this is a block, this is a user, this is a field, this is a region, and so on. So those are the three pieces that you get when you enable thin debug. So going uh, to our example, we already, uh, this, this is the, the, no, the template that thin debug told us that we were using. And in line number 94 of that template, we get the tagline where it says, submitted by author name on date. So we want to modify the date in line number 94. Usually in Drupal core, the templates come with very good documentation. So at the top of the template, you can see which variables are available for you to use. And in that template in particular, we see uh, in line 26 and 27, we have two variables, date and author name. And they say theme something, like theme date and theme uh, author. 
there is a catch with these variables. Usually, we don't provide to the templates something that is already themed. When it says it is already themed, it, it refers to HTML markup. We, uh, in Drupal, it is a best practice to delay converting whatever that you have to HTML markup to the last moment, if possible. Uh, what is the alternative if, if we are not printing HTML by default? We are printing render, render arrays. And the reason to print render arrays is that you can allow people to modify that array easily. It is uh, easier to modify a render array than to use a regular expression, for example, to modify some HTML markup that has already been uh, you know, set. So in this case, we cannot use neither of those variables to, to, to achieve what we want because that is HTML and parsing that HTML would be really hard. So how do we go about with that? Uh, in the same template, we, we see in line number 10 that the node uh, object has a function called gate created time and that will return a timestamp. So having a timestamp of the creation of the node uh, then Tweak has a, a filter called date, which receives a timestamp and allows us to format in whichever way we want. So that's what we're going to do here. Uh, in, uh, we identify what we're going to do, so we copy over that template to our theme, we rebuild the cache, and we make the change. And in this case, lines number 94 and 95. In line, nine, line number 94, we are setting a variable called custom date, and it is like node created date. We apply the, the pipe for the filter. Date is the name of the filter and then the format. Uh, there is some documentation about what are the variable, the options that you can define the format with, but how, how, that's how you do it. And once you have the, the variable, we just print it instead of the regular date, we print the custom date. And why do we go you know, with the trouble of creating an extra variable. And this is like something special in Drupal. When you have trans here, uh, that trans is used for translation. When using trans, you can only print scalars. That is, you can only print like uh, numbers, you can print uh, strings, you can print even arrays. But you cannot call functions, or you cannot call filters, or you cannot call test with the trans. That won't work. Uh, so that's why, because we need to apply the date filter, what we do is we create a variable outside of the trans, and then we, we use that variable inside the trans. So that, that only applies when working with trans. Otherwise, you can, you can use you know, filters and tests and functions however, however you want. And after we do that, we, you know, we clear the cache and that's the result. We modify the, the format of the date. And for the ones who were paying very, very close attention, there is one thing to note. In the comment of the template, it says that the node object has a method called get created time with uh, parentheses. When I printed the variable, I did it like node.created time and then that's it. So what I am doing here, I am using the benefits of the dot notation that it will evaluate the, the thing after the dot to many things. So all of these three at the bottom are equivalent and they are going to do the same. Like in the first one, Twig will add the get and the parentheses. In the second one, Twig will add the parentheses. In the third one, it's just calling directly. And uh, usually, you, if you have, if you know what you know, what is the method, you can call the method directly. But this is just to illustrate how flexible Tweak is. Like all of those three things are equivalent. And why you shouldn't do this? Uh, because we were taking a template from Bartik, and in Drupal, you should not, you shouldn't do that. Uh, it is a best practice to only sub team from classy or from a stable. And the reason is because uh, in Drupal 8, contrary to Drupal 7, 
it is possible between minor releases to modify the markup of the themes. So Bartik can change the name of a class, let's say from 8.3 to 8.4. And if your CSS depends on that class name and it changed, then it breaks. So as, as a best practice, in Drupal 8, you do uh, sub-theming from classy or stable only. And also, the example that I did, uh, there are some configuration in the Drupal website where you can do that. So there is no need to go you know, through the process of this. That was just an example. OK, any questions so far before going to the recipes themselves? Okay, so let's just start. Oh, yeah. Are you going to post your uh, the slide deck? Yeah, it is already available. The, I'm going to show the link again at the end of this presentation. But bit.ly slash tweak dash recipes, you can you can follow along. Okay, the the first recipe. How do I pass information uh, from Drupal to Tweak? Let's say that. The variables that the Twig templates provides are not enough. I need something else. How do I provide that information? So in the theme, there will be a file called the name of the theme dot theme. So we're going to add some code to that. Uh, we're going to implement hook, preprocess hook. And there are two hooks in this, in this name. The first one in lowercase is going to be replaced by the name of the theme. So if your theme name is Nicaragua, it will be Nicaragua underscore preprocess underscore something else. The hook in uppercase, that is the theme hook that theme debug gave you. Remember that when we enable theme debug, it gives like theme hook node or theme hook block or theme hook whatever. So whatever it gives you, you're going to use that to replace what is uppercase in here. And then uh, when you implement that function, that's a PHP function, you get some variables which you can modify. It's an array. That, uh, that is a key value array. All the keys from that array are going to be transformed to variables in the theme, in the tweak theme. And the value of those keys are going to be the values of the variables in the tweak template. And when you, you know, modify the variables that you want, you just print them. So let's see an example here. Let's say that uh, we have a, a node. And in that node, we define some hero image, like a big image uh, with some text. And we want to print that outside of the context of the node. Let's say that uh, instead of, you know, a node by default is like title uh, and then the rest of the fields. Let's say that we want to uh, move that image and that text from the node to like a, a, a banner in the, at the top of the page. Because that is outside of the node template, you cannot do it like easily. But you can do something like this. You modify the page template, and you add more variables to that page template. Let's say uh, to print the content of the node, in a different region. So what do you do? When you are viewing a node in Drupal, you will always get a variables uh, array with a key called node. And so you check, is this variable defined? And if so, is this variable of type page, for example? In this case, again, bundle is the content type. So I am doing this only for the page content type. So if those conditions are true, what I'm going to do is create two new, two new variables, cover image and cover title. And then I get the result, I get like the image itself and the tech itself. So variable node, then I call the get method, I pass the name of the field, and that gives me something. And then I call the view method, and when it says full, it, refer, it refers to the view mode. So what I'm saying here is from the node of type page, I want to get the field image, and I want to get the configuration of that image for the full view mode. I can replace full by teaser, and I get a configuration for the teaser view mode. And that will return a render array. And again, the reason to return render arrays is because down the road, another module, for example, can modify that. 
let's say that instead of printing the, the hero image at the top of the page, it for some reason prints it at the bottom of the page, then it will be easier to modify a render array than the markup like constructed already. So we provide the variables uh, in the in the page uh, in the page hook, and then in the page template itself, we just do something like this. Like if cover image render, that means if there is something in the image, then we print a markup related to that cover image. Uh, let's pay attention to line number three and line number five here. In uh, both are talking about cover title. In line number three, I have uh, the render filter. In line number five, I don't have the render filter. Why does that happen? For one, we need to remember that we are providing a render array. So if you apply an if condition on a render array, it will always be true because it is an array. Even though when rendered, it doesn't yield any markup, it is still a valid PHP uh, array, so it will re return true. So to verify that we actually have content to be printed, we call the render uh, filter on, on the variable, and that will turn the variable to something. It can be like the, let's say, the HTML markup or an empty string if there is nothing to print. So like that's, and that's what we use in the if condition. Now, why do, do, do I am not required to do the same in line number five? Because when we are printing something using the curly braces, curly braces again, Remember that the dot notation, even though we're, we're not using any dot here, it will do the same. Like it will go through all the, all the process. And one of the steps is checking if this is an array called render. So in that case, in line number five, render is called automatically. If you do it manually, like, you know, if you pipe uh, render, it will work too, but you don't have to do it. But that only works when printing something using two curly braces. When uh, working with control structures like an if condition, you have to call render manually because that doesn't come out of the box. Uh, is, is, is it too confusing or is it good? Okay, good. So recipe number two. Let's say that in the template, we want to render some fields based on the values of other fields. Let's say that um, we have uh, an image, and in the content type, we have an option to define, do we want to open this image in a light? Okay, to give the full example, uh, we have an image that is linked to some other node. But do we want to open that node as, as a new page request, or do we want to open that node in a light box, for example? So we have a Boolean field in the content type to do that. So sometimes, when working with Twig, you have to also modify your content type configuration, and we're going to explain why. So the way to do it is when you're going to configure the view mode for, for that content type, you go to the field, in this case it's called Lightbox, you hide the label, so the, the, this is crop, but the first thing where it says hidden, that is the label, you don't want to print the label of the field. And in the output format, you select one slash zero. Because by default, you know, you can configure the, the, the field to say open in lightbox or do not open in lightbox. And Drupal by default will print that text. We don't want that. We want either a one or a zero. Okay, so that's the configuration. And then in the template itself, how do we do this? Um, in a note, template, you will have a variable called content, and inside that content, you will have all the fields that you have available for that content type. So in this case, we're looking for the field underscore lightbox. And we call two filters, one called render and one called trim. So by calling render, what we get is the one or zero that we configured in the previous uh, screenshot. And why do we need trim? The trim filter, what does is it removes white space from the beginning and from the end of the, of, of the text. It happens that Drupal is so generous that it will give 
white spaces before and after printing the variable itself. And we have a problem here because if we have a space, one space, that is a valid PHP, like a true value in PHP. And if we have a space, zero space, that also is valid. So we don't want those extra spaces. We just want the one or the zero. In PHP, if you only have the zero, it will evaluate to false. If you have a space either at the beginning or at the end, it will evaluate to true no matter what. So that's why we are removing the, the zeros. Yes? So why, aren't you, why are you not using the actual value of the field? Why are you using the rendered value of the field instead of the actual value? OK, so the question is, why I don't use the actual value instead of like the zero and one? Uh, for one, it's kind of preference, and it also like makes the the template uh, more compact. For example, in line number two, I am just doing if and the name of the variable, and tweak automatically will evaluate the one or the zero, and you know do the proper result. If I didn't do the trim, I will have to like if lightbox equals a space, one, like a, a, as a string, a space, one a space. I, I think you're misunderstanding, exactly. though, because you actually have, a, if you look at the template, you have a node variable, which will give you node.field, and it'll be the actual field mm -hmm. uh, contents, like the field value, as opposed to the rendered content or the render array. So, for instance, it'll be a Boolean value. Oh. Node.field light box will be a Boolean value instead of. The oh, okay. Rendered, um, okay, so if I understand correctly, what you're saying is that if I call in the, in the second line, if I call content that fill lightbox, it will automatically give me the zero or the one. But no, if you're calling content that fill lightbox, you're <laughs> getting the rendered content. If you, I think it's uh, content, uh, it's node dot fill lightbox. You'll get the actual node, like the node object instead of the content render array. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I am not following, mm -hmm. so maybe we can talk yeah, after the we'll talk. talk about, uh, but uh, what basically, what this is doing is like, in the content variable, which contains all the fields in the template, mm -hmm. I want the field lightbox, which is a render array. I call render on that, and then I call trim. Uh, maybe, maybe I, I, I don't I don't know uh, for sure that if you call content field lightbox it will give the zero with the one automatically. Sometimes that is possible, but uh, I am not sure. I will have to test that. And in this case, you know, if this boolean field is one is set, mm -hmm. then I print the video or whatever thing I want to print. Uh, and you could uh, use like that content dot field lightbox render trim, you can put that directly in the if statement. The reason why I didn't do it is because I'm going to use the same variable multiple times in this template. In this case, it is trim, but down in the template, I use it again. So if you're going to use it only once, you can like, put it inline in the if statement. If you're going to use it multiple times, it makes sense to create a variable and reuse it over and over in the same template. So that's how like, you can define a Boolean field and render other fields based on that Boolean value. Any question with that one? Oh, sorry, I already, okay. Uh, so the next one, how do I render image fields as background images? So there in Drupal 8.3, they added something that make this process easier. So I'm going to explain both, how to do it in 8.3 forward and how to do it in 8.2 backward. So in 8.3, uh, and that is the, the node where you can find what was added for making this possible, you have an image field. And in the view mode configuration, you configure the image field to use URL to image format. And then you render the variable, as simple as that. So again, this is the, the configuration page. I, I hide the label. I define the format, and optionally, you can define the image style to be used. And this is going to give you the URL to the image itself instead of printing an image tag. You just get the URL. When you get the URL, 
you do the following. Uh, let's say you have some tag in this in this case section, and you call uh, the, you have the style attribute, and then you call background image URL, and then uh, what ha what is in curly bracket percent sign? Uh, that is the tweak part. That is the dynamic part. So what we're doing here is content that field horizontal image is that image field. It is going to be a render array, but because it is a print statement, render will be called automatically. But why do we need this spaceless at the beginning and the spaceless at the end? Again, Drupal is so generous that it will give you white space before and after rendering the value of the, of the variable. And uh, it is in valid CSS to have uh, a background image attribute like URL, something, a space, the link, a space, that's in valid CSS, it won't work. So uh, that's why we need the spaceless here. And What's the difference between spaceless trim and curly curly dash and dash curly curly and okay. all the same? Or? So the question is, what's the difference between a spaceless of trim and uh, the dashes at the beginning and the end? About the dashes, I am not completely sure. I know that they remove uh, white space from the beginning and or end of the, of the stream. But in this case, uh, if you call trim, it will, for some reason, still leave white space. So I tried the, I, for, for this example, I tried all of them, like I tried trim, I tried the dashes, I tried the spaceless, and only spaceless worked. And to be honest, I didn't want to spend that time in the debugger because all of this is translated to PHP in the end. And sometimes that's the only way to debug stuff, but because it worked, I didn't spend the time to, you know, why does it work with this one and not with the other one? But a spaceless is actually used several times in, in these examples. But I might be wrong, and you might be correct. And if we do further testing, we can find out that trim and the uh, dashes are equivalent. But when I was trying this like a year ago or so, this is the only thing that worked for me. So that, that's, that's how I do it. And one catch also is that if you have thin debug enabled and you try to do this, it will break. Because even though you are removing the white spaces, you still have the debugging information. And that is not valid CSS either. So that's why at the end, when you're done with everything else, you have to disable thin debug, otherwise, when you use uh, this uh, field content as HTML or CSS attributes, they will break. So make sure at the end of the process to disable thin debug again. And in 8.3 and before, uh, there are a couple of modules that were able to do this, but one of them is URL for modern module. So you would install the module and then you follow the same recipe. Before, uh, before 8.3, uh, you were not able, using Drupal core out, out of the box, to generate only the link to the image. You always get like the image tag. But uh, that's why we needed the module before. So when we had that module, again, we hide the label, and we define the URL type to full URL image. This is the, the configuration of the module itself. You optionally define an image style to use, and that module allows you to link the image to something. In this case, we only want the, the image itself. If we link it to something, we will get an A tag, which we won't be able to use as the URL uh, value for the background image attribute. And the rest of the thing is, is the same. You just print the variable, and that, that's it. Any question? What was that you just said, because I, I didn't really hear. You said Image URL is what you Yeah, that, that's the name of the module, image URL for matter. Okay. So the rest is the same, but okay. in Drupal 8.2 and below, you need that extra module. Got it. Can, can you explain how, what's the difference between using the content dot syntax versus the node dot and when it's appropriate to use each one? Okay, so. 
the uh, the, the content, so the question is, when do you use the node versus the content uh, variables in a, in a tweak template? For one, uh, you need to check which variables are available in your template. So uh, node is only available in the, co in the context of a node template, for example. And between no if you were to have both available, content will give you the render array of the fields. Node will give you more information, like metadata information about the node itself. For example, with a node, you can get like the timestamp when it was created. You can get the user ID of who created the node. You know, all those extra meta information that you get from the node will be available inside the node variable. In addition to the content. In addition, yes. And uh, one thing is that if you are like a backend developer, the node object has a lot of methods uh, in the backend. In the front end, you only get a shrink version of the node. Like, there are some methods and properties that are not available in the template itself. That's why you have to refer to the comments at the top of the template to verify what you have available or not. Any other question? Okay. So, for recipe, how can I render node content as HTML attributes? And in this case, uh, let's say that we have a file field where we allow people to upload an SVG file, and we want to use that SVG file as the source for an image tag. So what you do, you know, you have your file field, you hide the label, and the format that you use is URL to file, and then you, you, know, you do the same thing again. I guess, uh, <laughs> Like I said at the beginning, what we need to understand is the process. When you get the process, it's just repeating the same thing over and over again. With this, I will get the URL to the SVG file, and with that, I can simply pass that as the source attribute for an image tag, and that's it. And because Drupal's generosity, I need to use the spaces operator again to remove the white spaces before and after the image itself. Um, this one is a little bit more uh, cumbersome. So let's say that I have in my node an entity reference field, and I want to, I don't want to print the, like, the field itself. I just want to, to get the URL where it is pointing to. So how do I do that? So again, I have an entity reference field, in this case, it's called feature content. I hide the label, and I configure it to link the label to the reference entity. So what this is going to do is like, uh, it is going to create uh, an, a, a link. But when we're going to print, we don't want the full link. By that, I mean the A tag with the href attributes and so on. We only want the href. So, in addition to making this configuration, we have to uh, create a new template specific for this field. And again, that's why we use render arrays, because render arrays, render arrays are easier to modify. So in this field, like I said, for all the items that are going to be printed for this field, I only want the URL. And in this case, I cannot use the dot notation, because the property uh, URL starts, starts with a hash a hash sign. By doing this, like the item will have like the text and the URL. I am only printing the URL in this case. So with this, I already have the URL where this entity reference field is pointing to. Once I have that information, I just apply it like let's say in an A tag. I have an A tag with an href of the same recipe that we have been following. And then we have inside that A tag, something that can be like an image, that can be text, that can be both of them. You know, it is up to me to decide. And I am using that entity reference field to point this piece of markup to that, to that page. Any question there? Good. So we're almost uh, finished. This is, this is a shame that we have to do this recipe in this way. So how do I create an absolute link to a node? To be honest, I have never had to do this myself. I have seen people using it. 
Uh, but I was uh, in the Slack channel for three months and someone came up with a question, so I, I helped him and this is the solution and I guess it is common because I have seen it being asked or used many times. So let's say that I have a node and I want to print an absolute link to that node. By default, the node object will give you uh, just a node ID. You might try to get the relative URL, but let's say that you want a full URL like HTTP, colon, slash, slash, your domain, the path, and so on. How do you do that? Uh, Drupal provides a URL function where you, for some reason, have to pass two parameters. One is a string called entity.node.canonical, which doesn't make any sense, and the second is an object where you need to find as a key the word node and as a value the node ID, which is like node one, node two, and so on. So that's how you build uh, absolute URL in Drupal 8. Again, it doesn't make any sense. The whole point of using Tweak is abstracting this complexity from the theme, and we're not doing a good job here. So how do you find out that you need to use entity.node.canonical? And how do you know that the variable for the object needs to be called node? You use Drupal console, which is a great tool. So in Drupal console, you can use a command called router colon debug, and then you use pipe, grep, and then the path that you want to point to. And it will you know, inspect your Drupal system, and it will give you, okay, for this slash node, these are the routes available. The routes is like entity that know that canonical. And when you identify which route is the one that you need to use, then you call like again the same command, but you pass the name of the of the route, and it will tell you which are the uh, like the object names that it is expecting. In this case, node. It doesn't make much sense for a front end developer, but unfortunately, that's how Drupal 8 works. And if this was too confusing. Yes, it is a lot, a lot. I guess if you're rendering content in multiple, like I guess, areas, but you're generating it at, the, as, at a single source, that may be why you have to use canonical. Yeah, so uh, the comment was if you are uh, generating content in different places and rendering in one single location, that might be a use case for, for this recipe. So this is mostly for completion. And to illustrate that, if you want to learn more or you need help, these are some resources. So in Drupal con Barcelona, there is a video recording by Javier Aguiluz, which is a documentator from, for the Symphony project. Highly, highly recommended. The session is called Mastering Tweak. And if you want to know a little bit more about theming in general in Drupal 8, uh, Daryl Norris has this Drupal Nader theme station, a session that you can watch also in YouTube. And if you are stuck with anything, you can go to Freenode in IRC, uh, pound Drupal dash tweak, or in Slack, Drupal tweak slash Slack, and you can go to the channel and there will be people hopefully available to help you. Uh, thank you for your time, thank you for being here, and I will highly, highly appreciate your feedback. You can do so through the join in link or just ping me in anywhere. Thank you very much. So.